Yeah, India has one of the largest leather craft business in the world. Maybe you may not realize that when we think of leather, we may think of the United States and Italy and Brazil, but India is right up there. The only difference is their cattle die a natural death before they use their cow hides to make leather. An assessment of energy expenses and yields demonstrates that cattle are used more competently in India than in the U.S. Indian farmers are thorough in product use and getting rid of waste. The industrial countries have a good deal more accessible energy than India does, but their utilization of it is more wasteful than India's. Yeah, it's very interesting, boys and girls, when you think about this, um, in, especially in third world countries, um, and India is no longer a third world country, but it's, uh, it's, there's a lot of poverty there still. Um, they don't waste the way we do. It's amazing. I mean, think about it. They used every part of the cow. Just look at the cow. Okay, it's, it's sacred. Okay, they, uh, they use it for farming. The, the dung of the cow is used for fertilizer, for floor material. Think about it, to make their floor material. They also use it, they dry it, they, they use it, and once it dries into chips, they use it for cooking. That's amazing. They don't waste anything. Not only that, and then once the cow dies a natural death, there's a certain group of Indians who are allowed to eat it, and also they make leather from it. Okay. Very little waste. I mean, uh, you look at the United States, we're number one in the world in producing garbage. You know, that's something to think about. You know, third world countries, uh, you know, whatever they have, they utilize. Okay, especially because it's very interesting when you look at India and how uh, looking at the cow making it sacred and how they do that. By the way, you know, you may say, well, if there's, there's star starvation, how come, um, you know, and if, you know, you know, the, they're not eating the cow, wouldn't that help in any way? Well, I'll give you an example. Let's look at the United States. We have a million people hungry and home, homeless in the United States. Now, in our country, we don't have animals sacred, but we have pets, and people don't eat their pets. They don't eat dogs. Now, you're saying in the United States, if people were allowed to eat dogs, you know, say, let's just eat dogs, we would have no more starvation in the United States. Whether we eat dogs or not, that has nothing to do with uh, the hungry and the homeless in the United States. Okay, the reason why we have hungry and homeless in the United States, it's based on a market economy. All right? If you don't have the money, even if you're starving, you don't get the food. That's the harshness of a market economy. All right? Uh, now, you've got to look at what's going on in India then, okay, that you have starvation and yet the cows produce all this food even though they don't eat the cow all right how come you still have starvation there well kind of similar in the united states what is ha you know you look at you have a market economy you look at you know you look this up for yourself look go in the encyclopedia and look up what india exports and you'll find that indian india exports rice fruit and vegetables well, if there's starvation there, why are they exporting grain uh, and vegetables and fruit? Well, that's part of a market economy. It's more profitable to export it. They'll make more money that way than to feed everybody in their own country. This is what's been going on in a lot of countries. I said in an earlier episode, 36, and the, India is not included in this. They're not part of the 40 poorest countries in the world, but there's a similarity going on. 36 of the 40 poorest countries in the world export food to North America because it's more profitable to do that than to feed everybody in their country. And that's how the market economy works. Whoever's, whoever pays more, wherever you can make more money. You know, you know that the, the market economy is very simple to understand. They're just interested in making a profit. That's it. You know, if they're able to make a profit and be humanitarian, Fine. If they're able to make a profit and everybody benefits, fine. But if they, if, if, uh, but if they can't make a profit, well, the, the, uh, and if it, if it benefits them, excuse me, if it benefits the capitalists to make a profit and a lot of people get hurt, that's fine too. That comes secondary. The idea is to make a profit. Okay, so what does the environment support? What is more efficient in India? Once again, if you look at that photo, look at the size of the, that cattle. Very different from American cows. American cows are not that big. See, in India, boys and girls, the cattle, 
that they have there in India is amazing if you ever see that. That cattle could go for weeks, maybe even months, boys and girls, with very little food, very little water, and it could still pull a plow. That animal is so strong. You can see it gets skinny, yet it's strong enough to pull a plow. It's amazing. You know, so very different from our American cattle. Our American cattle is not that strong, or that, nor that big. Look, at, look once again, if you look at, look at the graphic there, how big it is. Conclusion, India's reference of cattle has highly favorable results for the country's farmers, farming system, and economy. It is a reasonable response to the environment, which does not readily sustain cattle raising. Yes, the Middle East is good for cattle raising or herding. It's not good for farming. You have a lot of land in the Middle East. Um, the population overall per land uh, is smaller. Uh, although the population in the Middle East is a lot of people that live there, but smaller than India. And like I said, the, the farmland, good farmland is limited there, so herding is perfect for the Middle East and to have a herding society. In India, they have good farmland, farming is preferable. If you have good farmland, farming is, is chosen over herding. Okay, the source Marvin Harris, he passed away a while ago. Uh, he, there's a great book where I got that information from, if you could see, Cows, Pigs, Wars, and Witches. Isn't that a great title of a book, Cows, Pigs, Wars, and Witches, by Marvin Harris? He's an anthropologist. Okay, what is the four-letter word that ends in U-C-K, boys and girls? That's right, I'm going to say it. It ends in U-C-K. Here it goes. The word, the four-letter word is, that's correct, it's muck. That's right, muck. And what's muck? Muck is dung manure. That's what muck is. It's another way of saying uh, dung and manure. As we learned today, with the right soil and fertilizer, cow muck, or dung, we can produce way more food farming than by herding. Okay. And now, boys and girls, uh, you know, as we look at in a future society, you know, we, you know we're going to use everything to our benefit. You know, uh, today, the way technology is, you know, in an economic democratic world, you know, we, if we become one society, no more countries, in other words, we just become one planet, one earth, one big country, no more boundaries, okay, we could share all the technology in the world, okay, and we could do a different type of farming. Also, uh, we'd encourage, once we have all this technology, we, pr we produce way, way, way more food than we could possibly uh, need. You know, 10 times more food. Okay, we just have to set it up right. We got to get the politics out of the way. So economic democracy is the collective ownership or, or control by the workers of the factories, mills, mines, railroads, land, and all other apparatuses of producing. Land includes farming, boys and girls. We, the workers, control all of this. Economic democracy means producing to satisfy human needs, not as under the market economy for selling and profit. No longer a profit, we're talking about needs. We're going to incur, you know, we want to feed everybody in the world. We're going to make sure everybody gets an education, a super education. We all become knowledgeable. Okay. Um, we all become, you know, allowed to create. We, we're, we're all allowed uh, to, you know, science and art. This is going to be taught right from the very beginning. I mean, we're going to have a different type of society. As a matter of fact, the grunt work as we develop this type of society, is no longer going to be done by human beings, boys and girls. It'll be done by robots. We have the technology. We have the computer, and we have the computer to run the robots, okay? And that leaves the rest of all human beings to do science, art, and making sure that all of us ha are loved and cared for. Okay, different type of society. It's not based on competition and profit, but based on sharing and producing to satisfy human needs, whether it's um, the, the health care that we need, the food that we need, the creativity, the science, the knowledge that we need. Economic democracy means true command and administration of the industries and social services by the workers through a democratic government based on their economic organization and not controlled and managed by a fraction of a percentage of the population as in the market economy.